we've got this chatterbox up in our heads. It just keeps talking, talking, talking. And many times we think it's our thoughts. We lay claim to them. And the problem is that we're not really skillful about doing it, because sometimes the thoughts in the mind are useful and sometimes they're not. Think of it as many voices up there. Some of them are intelligent, some of them are not. They all seem to be speaking with the same voice, though. So you have to be very careful who you listen to, who you don't listen to. There's a widespread belief that the Buddha taught the Galama saying, go by your own sense of right and wrong. But when you look inside your mind, okay, whose voice you're going to listen to? Who is your, your own sense? There are lots of different voices in there. You look outside, and again, there are lots of voices outside as well. So what do you do? You try out different people's advice. You try out the different voices inside and see what works. And that's basically what it comes down to. Of course, if you tried out everything that comes into the mind, you wouldn't, you'd die before you'd come to any kind of really firm conclusions. So you try to look and see who's, who seems most believable, which voices, either inside or outside, seem most reasonable, seem most useful. And then you test them even further. In other words, you look at your thoughts not simply as events or judgments and what's true and false, but as parts of a causal chain. What, happened, what would happen if you followed those thoughts through? This is really important. I mean, you're, what goes on in your, mind, in your mind is karma as well. We tend to think of karma having to do with our relations with other people, the things we do to them, either good or bad. The things they do to us in return, either good or bad. And we forget that the thoughts going through our mind, that's very important karma right here, right now. These are actions. Actions have results. And the skill in learning how to get some use out of your mind is learning which thoughts are useful tools. When are they useful? Where are they useful? We hear that views are one of the metal fermentations, views are one of the forms of attachment. Well, does this mean we don't have views? Well, no. How can anyone live without views? If you try to deny that you have views, it's just that. It's denial. And the views go underground, where you can't really see them. So you learn how to look at views, views instead as tools. When is a particular view useful? When is it not useful? That way you learn to pick them up, put them down, pick them up, put them down as needed. You don't have to carry them around all the time. This is an important lesson. Even though the Buddha had awakened to the truth, and he said he didn't define himself in terms of those truths. They were there. Whenever he needed them, all he had to do was just put the question to his mind, and there was the response. Now, to have that kind of inventory of knowledge requires that the mind be really quiet and very still. That's the the center from which you can notice things. That's the center from which you can pick up your tools and use them properly. So that's why, that's why the practice of meditation is such an important kind of karma as well. Learning how to put the mind in the spot where it doesn't have to carry its tools around, but its knowledge is there when it needs it. So we try to find a balance as we're meditating. How to be quiet and yet alert at the same time. So that when issues arise in the mind, okay, we know what we should do. And when that particular understanding has solved a particular problem, okay, then you put it down. You don't go carrying things around with you. And 
If you do have to carry things around, okay, make sure it's that state of concentration that you're carrying around. And not a lot of other stuff. Stay with the breath. Stay with the present moment. Try to maintain that. And if it seems burdensome, well, it doesn't matter for the time being. It's a skill you're working on. Because as you get more and more skillful in staying in the present moment, it becomes more and more second nature, easier and easier all the time. And don't worry about getting stuck on concentration. That's the kind of thing you can get unstuck from pretty easily. It's a lot harder to get unstuck on your ideas. Many times things come up in the course of your concentration. Because as the mind centers in on the present moment, your, your sense of your body changes, your sense of your mind changes. All kinds of things can happen. So again, you have to watch these sensations as they come and go. Not be too quick to label them. Say, well, this must mean that, and that must mean this. Just look at what they are in and of themselves. And ask the question, okay, when is this particular state of mind useful? When is this particular sen way of relating to the breath useful? And just think about learning particular tools. That tools are not always useful all the time. It's sort of you come, knowledge you come at through your study, through your meditation. Okay, learn it. it's at the best. At best, it's a tool something you pick up to use and then you put down again. And that way you're safe. You're not carrying a lot of excess baggage around. And you don't fall into that syndrome where if you've got a hammer in your hand, everything you see is a nail. In other words, you've got one tool, but you try to use it in all sorts of circumstances, whether it's appropriate or not. Remember, we're working on a whole box of tools here. The mind centered on the breath, that's the central skill. That's your central tool. That's a tool that's useful almost all the time. So that's why we work on it. That's why we stress it. As for the other tools, okay, learn when they're useful, learn when they're not. And if you keep the mind still in the present moment, you, have to, you don't have to worry about losing them. mind is really present right here. Okay, things will come to it. Realizations will come to it. Then you learn how to test them. And as you get more and more sensitive in the present moment, you get quicker and quicker at having a sense, okay, what's useful, what's not. What's helpful, what's not. So use the breath as your central skill, your central object of attachment. And everything else learn to put up and take down as you need it. Eventually you get to let go of the breath, but don't be in too great a hurry to do so. Because the mind needs a, a center that it can hold to. so it doesn't get flung out in different directions. To try to look at whatever comes your way as a potential tool. Some things you look at them immediately, you know this is not going to be useful for anything at all. Other things you're not so sure, well just file it away for future reference. But remember, nothing you encounter in the meditation is an end in and of itself, until you really get to the end. Everything else is a tool. <laughs>